What's going on, weaves? We got a brand new video today. This time, we're gonna talk about the best gender seeking equality man of all anime, Toma Kamijo. I've been getting a lot of requests for this guy, so we're gonna pair him up against the perfectly imperfect loser, Misogi Kumagawa. Now, look, out of all the fucking Toaru series characters you wanted me to fucking do, you told me to do Toma Kamijo. Bro, come the fuck on, you nerds! We could have done my girl Othanos, Nephthys, Dark Matter, Thor. World Rejector, Corazon, Fiamma of the Right, Loki, Iwas, Gabriel, and uh, there's so many more cool characters in this fucking series, but of course, we have to do fucking Toma, of course. A fucking course, right? I can see why all you fucking nerds wanted me to do a video over this. Basically, what we have here are two fucking losers that have overpowered fucking ability. But wait, who has the more overpowered ability? Well, the obvious answer is Toma. Now, all right, you fucking donuts, let's break this shit down on why Kamijo, the unfortunate king of all anime, would win over this fucking or Kumagawa. First, usually when I do these types of verse battles, I always like to explain the base feats for each character. So let's get this shit out of the way very quickly. So for something like this, the ability of speed isn't really as important as like other verse battles, but I'm gonna quickly go over them. Toma is at peak human strength, and he was shown to have short bursts of movement, which kept up with Kanzaki. As we all know, Kanzaki is massively hypersonic fast because she fought against this blonde bitch, Brunhild Aitobel. Do you remember her? I talked about her in my other video where Makoto fucks up this bitch no? You don't remember? Yeah, neither do I, honestly. Kumagawa is minimum hypersonic fast. This was because he was able to keep up with Zenkichi and could fight him. Now that we got these useless speed feats out of the way, we can move on. Let's take a look at these fucking loser's abilities. First, we're gonna start off with the best gender equality man of all anime. <laughs> To Wait, who the fuck is it? Yo. Francis! What the fuck, dude? Bro, yo, you're fucking dead, bitch! What the fuck beat the sh- Anyways, let's start off with Kamijo's powers. Imagine Breaker is one of Kamijo's most notable abilities in the whole Tuaru franchise. But what is Imagine Breaker? Well, simply put, it just negates everything that's supernatural. While it can negate something that is supernatural, the ability cannot negate the natural forces. Like, for example, someone's life force. It's also very important to understand that this ability can't completely negate a supernatural ability. For example, if it surpasses the canceling speed such as Styles Inokentius or Accelerator's Dark Wings, then it wouldn't be as effective. But Toma has learned to use this limitation to his advantage. When upon contact with an attack, he can physically grab it and disrupt it. Quickly, I want to address that Toma also has the ability of precognition, which is fucking huge and will be very useful in this verse battle. The next thing I want to address is what lies beyond Toma's right hand. What happens when his right arm is cut off? Well, while he was fighting the stupid ass alchemist, Toma got his arm chopped off and this led to a dragon head appearing. At this point, Styles said that it was the alchemist's thought that was being manifested, but Toma actually had some doubts about what Styles said. Later, we see Kamijo along with Gunha fighting against level 6 Makoto Shift. Here, we can clearly see that 8 dragons emerge from his right arm, and each of these 8 dragons have different abilities. First, the blind black dragon head. This head is also stated to have a powerful psychological effect. In this case, the dragon is known to cause those nearby to overcome with terror and confusion. The next one is the one-eyed blue dragon head with a cobra-like hood. Now, this dragon head is stated to be a water dragon that can summon rainstorms. Additionally, its fangs carry the undilated concept of poison, so those that it bites are either killed or subjected to a fate worse than death. Now, the green head with four eyes. This dragon head is stated to possess multiple eye powers, including illusion, hypnotism, and more. Mainly, it can blur the line between dream and reality. Additionally, it is stated to be a singer with a beautiful voice that can shatter objects, including shadow metal, an extremely rare metal that can sometimes be created by the clash of two powerful espers. Next, we have an undead fire dragon covered in red flames erupting from its bones. This dragon is stated to damage things using an energy drain that apparently burns off the person's life force. Next is the ice crystal dragon. It is stated that this dragon is capable of breathing ice and is being as tough and as solid as the planet itself. The next one after that is the yellow dragon. The yellow dragon is a large spear-like horn. This one is stated to be capable of releasing lightning from its body and firing lasers from its mouth. Lastly, we have the white angelic looking dragon that is surrounded by multiple feathered wings. The dragon head here can project a light from a cross on its forehead. An object directly hit by this cross of light will be turned into salt, causing it to quickly crumble. Additionally, the feathers on its wings also possess a special power. Those stabbed with one are brainwashed as if hypnotized and turned into mindless puppets. Faithfully following any orders 
given to them by the user. However, they are unable to think for themselves while under the effects of these feathers. Now wait, you're probably thinking, wow, that's a lot of abilities. That must be all, right? <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have the invisible thing. Wow, what a fucking creative name this thing is. <laughs> Get it? Thing? As his arm was severed and absorbed by Fiamma of the right, Fiamma's next attack that had the power to turn the entire planet to dust was cut in half before reaching Toma, as if there was an invisible right hand stretching from the wound on Toma's shoulder. As the invisible power gathered beyond the wound, Fiamma felt inferior and overshadowed, believing that everything he had paled in comparison to that great power. However, a second power described by the narration as Kaimyo Toma's own power appeared above the invisible thing, seemingly opened up a large mouth and swallowed it up. After that, Toma addressed the invisible thing and told it to stay out of the fight, as if he would take care of it. Just before his right arm regenerated and Toma regained his imagine breaker back. The invisible thing appeared once more when my girl Othanos crushed his right hand. Lastly, we have Toma's dragon shell. Basically, this is just a temporary shell he gains when Imagine Breaker left him. This was worth mentioning, but it doesn't really contribute to the verse battle because uh, it's just not as important. So you can get educated, you fucking donkeys. Next, we're going to talk about Kumagawa. Kumagawa's most notable attacks are his ability to manifest things from imagination, his use of presence erasure, and his minus ability. Also, it is important to address that he imposes the image of a screw being pierced into the target in order to allow his ability, Bookmaker, to activate. This ability to imagine, or I guess, manifest material objects into reality is cool but this shit gets fucking hard countered by Toma's imagine breaker so get that fucking shit out of here boy his ability to remove his presence is cool i guess but Toma again hard counters this with his precognition or his sixth sense ability we know Toma outclasses Kumagawa here in these aspects but what about the minus abilities well let's start off talking about his abilities all fiction april fiction bookmaker and of course the lake eating forest first let's talk about his all fiction ability first and like what it really does his minus ability allows him to deny any aspect of reality so far he has used this ability to heal any wound done to him despite how grave they are an example of this is that he crushed his own brain with a giant screw and he could still regenerate it now he resisted having his body rotted away he brought himself back from death and he stole kenzichi's sight he can also heal wounds of other people and seemingly also materials that have been destroyed he has stated that he doesn't have to touch anyone or use his hands to use all his all fiction ability. One drawback of this ability is that he cannot undo something that he's already rejected, as shown when he stole Zinkichi's sight, and stated that he could not undo what he did. But by the end of the series, Ajimu grants him non-fiction, which undoes the erasure. During this time at Suisu Academy, he is shown to be able to use all fiction to erase the concept of colors, manipulate laws by erasing them. Furthermore, during the time he explained that to erase something, he said that something needs to be in his line of sight. However, it is quite unknown what counts as his line of sight. So now we have Bookmaker. Bookmaker is Kumagawa's original minus ability. While it does no physical damage, it does reduce their intellect, body, spirit, talent, and technique. For the last of Kumagawa's abilities, this ability is where Kumagawa covers the battlefield with flathead screws forcing his foes to balance on top of them. These screws are actually his bookmaker screws, inflicting heavy damage if one person falls due to the weight of the screws and allowing him to inflict bookmaker on those unfortunate enough to lose their balance. Then the ability we have here is 100 gauntlets. Basically, this is just causality, manipulation. He can control the cause and effect of things, but truthfully, this doesn't have a huge impact on what a magic breaker can do. But I want to include this in because I know someone in the comments will be like, but you didn't include in the 100 gauntlets. Yeah, fuck off, yeah. So. Now, knowing all of these abilities that I discussed from both sides, can Kumagawa still be Kamijo? Well, let's break this shit down even more. Pay very close attention. First, I want to explain why the majority of Kumagawa's abilities will not work. Now, it doesn't matter what Kumagawa thinks of or manifests against Kamijo. Nothing he creates matters because everything he does create is a supernatural object. Kamijo can literally just use his Imagine Breaker and negate the effects of this ability that Kumagawa has or throws at him. This is also implied for his leg eating force attack. Fucker can touch it once and it's gone. Now you're probably thinking, well he can just get hit by one of his bookmaker screws. The screw reduces intellect, spirit, willpower, everything I just mentioned earlier. But this wouldn't really work on Toma because Toma can just touch a place on his body that he was hit by and cancel this ability. But even more so, it was also shown that Toma's willpower due to this man being able to resist countless realities Othanos created. Othanos trapped Kamenjo and attempted to break him mentally and subjected him to various different versions 
of which caused him major suffering. And at that time, he did not break. He was close, but he did not break thanks to the will of the Mikasa network. Toma still had the ability to keep pushing forward and then even challenging Othanos to a fight. In the process of Toma challenging Othanos to a fight, she has killed him over a billion times in billion different ways. This feat here shows that the bookmaker will have no effect on Kamijo. Now, what about all fiction? Ah shit, this is about to get really fucking confusing, isn't it? <sighs> First, let's think about this question. Can all fiction erase Imagine Breaker? Well now, hold on. Let's compare the situation to other scenarios that are quite similar. First, let's talk about this fucker Kamisado. This bitch could erase nearly anything with World Rejector. But in this case, we're talking about just Imagine Breaker. Because this ability of World Rejector erases from the inwards to outwards, and more so the ability has the same nature as Imagine Breaker, that right there entails that Imagine Breaker cannot negate World Rejector. Going from this fact right here, we know that all fiction cannot erase from the inside out like World Rejector. This ability just flat out erases. So now you're thinking, well wait, can't all fiction just give Imagine Breaker the on-off switch? This wouldn't work, and here's why. As I said previously, Imagine Breaker would just negate the effects of all fiction, but not negate the ability of all fiction. That's a huge difference here. Here's the next thing you fucking nerds need to understand. When someone in this verse battle brings up, oh, but he can remove the color of what he sees or whatever that fucking stupid ass shit is. Toma can cancel it out. And even so, even he does erase it, what does that mean? Like color's gonna go on just his right arm and like not other part of his body? He can just touch his body and get rid of all that. And that's the problem. So what? Who cares if he removes color? That doesn't really do anything. That's a supernatural phenomenon he can cancel out. So get that fucking shit out of here. Also, this fucking dude Kumagawa is obsessed with fucking panties, so he's probably just gonna get fucking distracted anyways. So now I guess you could argue which between these two has more power, because maybe that could be the deciding factor. Is all fiction more powerful or is Imagine Break more powerful? There's another factor to consider here. Sure, Kumigawa can just seal off Toma's power, but then he would just break the seal. So what then? I guess you could say it comes down to a basic ass fist fight, but if that were the case, Toma would undoubtedly win in a fist fight. So yes, I do believe overall Toma can beat the shit out of fucking Kumigawa. All fiction is very powerful, but it is not enough to get rid of Imagine Breaker. Most of, if not all attacks Kumigawa does are considered to be supernatural, and Toma has the high precognition in attacks for those that he will be sending at him. So like easily evading attacks and canceling that with Imagine Breaker is such an easy feat for Kamijo. This motherfucker right here, Kumagawa, I can't see this emo fucking bitch winning. He will just forever be the antagonist, the imperfect, perfect loser. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. For the next video, I want you guys to choose who to do next. I'm going to try this and see how it works. I'm going to make a poll on my Twitter. Follow me on my Twitter and I will post in the next couple of days a poll and recommendations of all the verse battles that I've been recommended so far. And please feel free to leave more recommendations too. The votes that have the most on the recommendation for the poll is what I will be covering in my next video. So if you have a recommendation and you want me to do it, put it in the comments on the poll and I will add it to the poll. I can't make a poll on YouTube right now because I guess fuck me, right? Now look, if you guys drop a like and a comment right now, I swear to God, I will drive my Lamborghini to your house and I will give you the cutest fucking dog you've ever seen. I'm just looking at him. Look how cute he is. Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Be sure to subscribe to me so you can be updated with all my first battle videos if you enjoy them. And yeah, uh, have a blessed day, guys. Uh, take care. Peace, peace.